I got the RST300 a few days ago, and they wanted to share a video and, you know, compared with the 135. I didn't find too many videos about this online, so hopefully, you know, this video and the videos I'm going to push in the coming weeks um, are useful for people considering this mount. You know, uh, having received this mount a couple days ago, I've not really had a chance to, you know, fully use it. I've been busy with work and the weather is not cooperating. Um, so I've just been looking at the moon. Uh, moon is up there right now. So after this video, I'm going to spend some time you know, just looking at it you now with the eyepiece. Um, so let me just quickly go over why, you know, I, I went from 135 to 300. You know, from a um, size perspective, you know, they're more or less the same. It's not a, it's not a massive difference, but uh, it, it is, it is bigger, right? So if you keep it side by side, you can see some, uh, it's really too dark, but uh, yeah, it, it's not like, uh, it's not a night and day difference, but it is n noticeably different. Um, now this mount, I can easily hold it with one hand and uh, just bring it out. Um, this one, I can but I, I think it's safer to use two hands. Um, just to give some perspective. You know, in terms of convenience, uh, they are more or less the same. Um, you know, they're very compact and the capacity is 13.5 kgs, which is 30 kgs. Uh, that's why it's, uh, it's called 135, this is called 300. Um, I don't know if this is gonna track better. Uh, I would expect them to uh, be tracking you know, about the same. Um, I let you know, you know once I uh, do an EAA session after the moon goes out, maybe sometime next week. Um, for now, it's been visual, so not much difference. The only difference uh, to me um, is that I can confidently put heavier scopes on this map. I have always been concerned um whenever i put a heavier or more expensive mount on that sorry uh, scope on this mount you know um it, it's very well known you know when you have the scope um not balanced properly and you pull the plug the power plug the gravity can uh, gradually pull the scope and uh, the scope will come and rest on wherever it hits um, i've had it happen to me you know once um it's it's quite scary um, but i wouldn't take chances you know leave an expensive scope on this so this mount has the ra brake now it's not a software feature it's more like this it's a it's a it's a, it's a hardware so it just kicks in whenever we lose the power. Um, this is a stowaway 92. Um, this is extremely lightweight. Uh, the 135 is more than capable to drive this uh, telescope. So uh, I just got it out because I'm going to just uh, take it easy and learn the mount first. Um, but I'm going to be using the 130 GTX, the astrophysics refractor on this. Um, until I get my, you know, TEC 180. Um, yeah, so that, that's what this mount is for, uh, for heavier refractors. The 135 is an awesome mount. So I can the uh, I can easily put the 130 GTX on this mount and uh, use it for visual. I've noticed that you know with a slightly longer uh, moment arm uh, with the wind kicks in um, this can be a little bit shaky so i'm hoping that you know this mount solves it and especially as i go into a much longer 180 
the performance of this mount just by virtue of its capacity you know, be able being able to hold it um, steady will help and then definitely the RA brake comes into play uh, giving me that uh, level of confidence I don't plan to leave it overnight an image um, I know people that do that um, these are great mounts uh, it has not failed on me um, I do have a good power source you know most of the times when people complain about um, you know um, unreliability on these mounts it has usually turned out to be because uh, um, they had uh, overloaded the power so this can act up so just give it its own power and it'll be very predictable so overall I think I'm pretty impressed with this mount just what I wanted um, I had sold the Mark 1 you know it's just too bulky and I was not really using it uh, or benefiting from the cap um, capability it's a, it's a beautiful mount Mark 1 but uh, I think it was just a little too cumbersome for my needs um, this is perfect I think it uh, handles all the scope that I had the Mark 1 in mind for and it's much more compact it just folds all the way and i uh, just keep it inside the house um, whereas the mark one took a substantial amount of room and it is cumbersome right you're putting the counterweights and uh, all those things so it's a time saver space saver and a weight saver so definitely um, a plus one to this uh, in terms of mechanical changes more or less the same um, you know there are some um, cosmetic changes you know um, I, I shouldn't say cosmetic I think um, the plug point the tip is uh, has like a metal screw so I guess as you use it regularly it, it doesn't break and the other functional change is all the sockets are on the face of the map nothing is on the side uh, except for the counterweight if at all you want to use the counterweight to the bottom um, I don't plan on using the counterweight on this. Um, I do have the counterweight for the 135. I never used it. I never had the need to use it. Mm. The, what else? The azimuth adjustment, the knobs are slightly different. Um, it's quite dark, so it might be better to just, you know, look at the pictures. But uh, I can tell you that, you know, it just, it just feels uh, smoother not much smoother but definitely smoother um, the 135 is not bad like I've used I've done like great polar alignment with it um, I'll see how this goes uh, for visual I don't bother doing polar alignment um, I just place it roughly facing north and I do a one star align um, the mountains good to go uh, but for EAA um, I do do polar alignment um that's about it for uh, initial impressions um i'll post more videos as i experience this mount but uh for now that's it let me know if you have any questions uh, that you would like me to answer i'll post some more videos on them thank you